To find our final solution, we just have to match the equation. So, psi continuous at x equals a. And what do we have? Well, from 2, you have cosine of ka. And from 4, you would have a equal e to the minus ka. This is the value of this so the interior solution at x equal a must match the value of the exterior solution at k equal a. Psi prime must be continuous at x equals a as well. Well, what is the derivative of this function? It's minus the sine of... Um, this, so it's minus k sine of kx, that becomes ka, is equal to the derivative of that one, which is minus kappa a e to the minus kappa little a. Two equations, and how many unknowns? Well, uh, there's a and some information about kappa and k. And the easiest way to eliminate that is to divide them. So you divide the bottom equation by this equation. So what do we get? Divide the bottom by the top. Minus k and a minus, the minuses cancel. We can cancel those minuses sign. And you get k tan ka is equal to minus uh, kappa. But you already are uh, convinced, I hope, on the idea that we should not use equations that have units. So I will multiply by little a and little a to get a doesn't size, and therefore the right-hand side becomes um, psi equals and the left hand side becomes eta tan eta. Okay, I want to make a little comment about these quantities already. So all the problem has turned out into the following. You were given a potential that determines a number z0. If you know the width and everything, you know z0. Now you have to calculate eta and psi. If you know either eta or psi, you know kappa or k. And if you know either k or kappa, since you know v0, you will know the energy. So it, it's kind of neat to express this uh, more clearly. And I think it's maybe easier if one um, uses psi and look at psi squared is kappa squared times a squared and what is kappa squared is over there 2m absolute value of e a squared over h bar squared Now, you want to find E, you're going to get it in some units. Even E is nice to have it without units. So I will multiply and divide by V0. 2m V0 A squared over H squared, absolute value of E over V0. After all, you probably prefer to know E over V0, which tells you how proportional the energy is to the depth of the potential. And this is your famous constant Z0. So um, E over V0 is actually equal to psi over Z0 squared. And this is something just to keep in mind. If you know psi, 
You certainly must know Z0, because that's knowing your potential, and then you know how much is the energy. All very convenient things. So, punchline for solutions. So, so what do we have? We have two equations. This equation maybe should be given a number. Um, you know, psi equal eta tan eta, and eta and psi squared go giving you z squared. So how do we solve it? We solve it graphically. We have psi eta, and then we say, oh, let's try to plot the two equations. Well, this is a circle, eta squared plus psi squared. Now, psi and eta must be positive, so we look at solutions just in this quadrant. Let's put here pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and here is eta, and there is psi. Well, this is a circle, as we said, but let's look at this. Psi equal eta tan eta. That vanishes as eta goes to 0, and will diverge at eta equal pi over 2. So this part, at least, looks like this. And then it will go negative, which we don't care, from this region. And then reach here at pi. And after pi, it will go positive again. And it will reach another infinity here. And then uh, at 3 pi, at 2 pi, it will go again and reach another infinity like that. So these are these curves. And the other curve, the circle, is just a circle here. So for example, I could have a circle like this. So the radius of this circle is radius z naught. And there you go. You've solved the problem. At least intuitively, you know the answer. And there's a lot of things that come out of this calculation. If the radius z0 is 3 pi over 2, for example, and the radius z0 represents some potential of some depth and width, there will be just two solutions. These are the solutions. These points represent values of psi and values of eta from which you can read the energy. In fact, you can look at this state and say that's the state of largest psi, psi and therefore it's the state of largest absolute value of the energy. It's the most deeply bound state. Then this is the next deeply bound state. There's two bound states in this case. Interestingly, however shallow this potential might be, however small, Z0, the circle, will always have one intersection. So there will always be at least one solution. That's the end of that story. Let me say that for the odd case, odd solutions. I will not solve it. It's a good thing to do in recitation or it's part of the homework as well. Uh, the answer for the odd case is that psi is equal to minus eta cot eta. And in that case, I'll give you a little preview of how the, this cot looks. It looks like this. And then there are more branches of this thing. So for the odd solution, you have these curves. And if you have a circle, sometimes you don't have a solution. No, it doesn't intersect this. 
So these odd solutions you will see and try to understand, they don't always exist. You need a potential that is sufficiently deep to get an odd solution. And then the odds and even solutions will interweave each other and there will be a nice story that you will explore in a lot of detail. But the lesson is you've reduced the problem to a unit free calculation in which you can get the intuition of when solutions exist and when they don't. But solving for the particular numbers are transcendental equations and you need a computer to solve.